Welcome back you're watching Storyboard. Many design agencies look at clients getting involved in the entire design process as a real pain point. Many of this is because designers fail to demystify the work they present. How do designers make things easier for themselves? Well, communicate with the client, says co-founder of Under Consideration Amin Witt. He spoke to Storyboard editor Anant Rangaswamy at Curious Design Yatra Goa. Let's take a look at this chat. I mean, thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having me. So there are you know, two halves to your business. You've got the graphic design and brand identity side of it, and then you've got the publishing business. Now, why is it so important for a larger design community to have somebody like you in the publishing business? Well, I think uh, in any industry, whenever you have as many voices as possible contributing to analyzing the industry and talking about it in different ways, I think that just uh, enriches the conversation and you know we're not traditional we're not traditional journalists uh, we're not uh, writers or, or editors it's something that we uh, just kind of like organically came into and we're graphic designers first so we are always looking at things from the point of view of uh, what we would like to know as graphic designers as graphic designers and what interests us uh, we assume that's going to be interesting for other um, other designers so that's been our approach to anything that we publish whether it's online or in printed form or you know even a, a conference event it's always been about um, leading off of our own curiosity and as hoping that other people will find it interesting as well. Now, do clients get involved with, uh, with your blogs and with your website and so on? So Other clients in general? Or yes, just, no, just marketers. Do marketers come there? While it seems to be first for designers, everything that you do, obviously the ecosystem gets involved. So the client must want to know what is happening in the design community. You yeah, know, I think... Um, it is, I would say, 90% of our audience are like the designers and now, especially with the blog we have on branding, uh, which is called Brand New, that one attracts a lot more people on the client end because they, want to, they do want to see what the conversation is about work that their competitors uh, might be doing. So, you know, if, uh, if Google, when, when Google redesigned, I'm sure people from Facebook, people from Twitter, they were all reading the, the conversation just to see uh, what they could learn from it, what they could, uh, you know, mistakes that they could avoid, things like that. So I think that with that blog in specific, there's more of, a, uh, more of the client side reading that. Um, they don't get us involved because they don't want to tip anyone off or, you know, they don't want to uh, command too much attention or call too much attention to themselves so they can still remain behind the scenes. So while you brought up the word, uh, what do you think of the Google logo? We'll come back to the rest yeah. of the conversation. So what do you think of it? I thought the logo, the, it was a fantastic change. Uh, it, it was a very needed change both uh, graphically, just the, the serif, old, the old serif logo was you know, 10, 12 years old, it was hard to read, it was hard to use, and the change to a sensor, if it was just the right, it made sense, it was well executed, and the system around the logo is, uh, I think, it, that is what elevates the whole uh, rebranding initiative, more than just the logo. So I think it's important to look past what the logo does, what the logo looks like, and look at what the whole, si and what a look at what the visual ecosystem that it lives in it ha is actually doing. So I think my favorite part was, uh, you know, when you do a search result on Google and you get all those O's, uh, now you have perfect circles on it, on it, all in a little line, and I think that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, one of the things is, you think of designers as people who draw things, design things, and so on. And suddenly when I, when I see under consideration, I say, hey, there's a design shop or design agency which also articulates it well. How important is that for you yeah, as a differentiator in your business? In the no, design, I, graphic design business. Yeah, I, th I think it's made a huge difference uh, uh, simply because um, the drawing part, you know, that's kind of like the easy part. That's the part that everybody can do in a way because everybody has access to the same tools. But the moment that you're able to verbalize an idea in an email to a client that may be in another city, another country, the moment that you're able to explain uh, something in a single paragraph through writing and being able to... Uh, uh, you know, give them a good ra rationalization of why something might work or not work. I think that's really important and it opens up your um, possibilities of what you can do be beyond just saying, here is one logo that you can do, here's two logo, another logo that you can do. So when you're able to 
bring a lot of verbal thought to it. I think it, uh, it changes the conversation with the client because they, they're able to... Sometimes when you show a client design, they don't know how to react, but if you explain what that logo is doing, they're more open to, uh, to, to what are new ideas or different ways of uh, doing things. So it's, it's been really important to be able to have that tool. Uh, this morning I was talking to three uh, CEOs of Indian design firms. And I was asking them how, how difficult is it to educate the client. For example, the client may think the old Google logo is better than the new one. And you're telling me now, A, the new logo is better and B, why it's better. Yeah. How impo important is it to continuously engage with the client and educate the entire client base? Well, I think that's always been a big thing where we talk about educating the client. But I, I, I think that's the wrong way of approaching it. I think it's uh, more about us learning to talk to the client right. and ourselves ed educating ourselves with how they look at things and presenting things in a way that they'll understand. Um, so there is a lot how of... How did you learn? Uh, how did you learn? Well, I, I mean, I was uh, lucky enough to work at, uh, at Pentagram, which right. is a, 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 a big international design firm, very well respected. So I was able to see how... I had a good mentor in Michael Brewer, one of the partners, and I was able to see how he talked to clients. And it, it was never... You know, in the studio, we would have all this really uh, nerdy conversations about what a, why we would choose a certain font or why it would be a certain size or why this color matter. But when we got to talk to the client, it was never about the history behind the font that we chose. It was just like, why is this relevant to your business in a way that the client would be comfortable um, accepting it as a proper solution for their, for their business. So it really is about not thinking that they don't understand what we're doing, but just kind of like taking the the mystery and the magic that we think that mm -hmm. graphic design is, because it really is just a set of visual tools that we're trying to use for different things. So the moment that you break it down, uh, it becomes much more accessible. So the last question, I'd like you to spend some time on this. You know, clients are more than happy to spend a couple of million dollars uh, on the airing of a Super Bowl spot, and yet when you know a good designer says, yeah. "I want a hundred thousand dollars for graphic identity." He says that's too much money. Yeah. How, how do you deal with that? How do you, as in the design community, how do you deal with this? Yeah, well, oh, I mean, why is this happening? Well, I think the, because it's hard to see the value of, uh, of a thing, you know, <laughs> whereas as, uh, it's not quantifiable. Whereas a TV spot, like, all right, it's going to air during this show, whether it's the Super Bowl or whatever, and there's going to be a million people that are going to watch it at the same time. Whereas a logo is like, yeah, it's going to go my business card that I might hand out to 100 people, or it might go on our products. Um, so they don't see the immediate value of what that logo does. So everything that you... How do you get them to see the value? I think it's all about saying, like, it's, it's the root of everything else. Uh, it's going to be the seed that you plant in, everybody, in everybody's mind so that when you, they see the, you know, your blooming flower of the, at a Super Bowl commercial, when you sign off with your logo, it's like, oh, that's the logo that's on my uh, computer, that's the logo that's on my phone, and it becomes this trigger for um, making all those associations with the brand. So it really is about reminding them that this is the one little symbol that they're going to be seeing all throughout your uh, uh, manifestations as a brand. Um, so you better get it right. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for talking to us. It's my pleasure. And hope to see you back in India. I will. Soon. I hope so too. From symbols that stand for brands to personalities that vouch for them. Now, Micromax has always played a shocker when it comes to his choice of celebrities for endorsement. This time round, the handset maker has launched a new campaign and has roped in popular stand-up comedian and now film star Kapil Sharma as an endorser for the northern markets. And the Bahubali sensation Rana Dagubati will be the face for the southern markets. Both these endorsers will be seen in a series of films that explain the benefits of Swiss Switching to a Micromax smartphone. Let's take a look. Hey, fancy dress? Where are you going? Bank loot ne jara. Hath me paise honge, the sab yar dost piche piche aenge. Dost nahi? Police aayegi piche. Dost chahiye na? Hath me smartphone hona chahiye. Bandas WhatsApp kar. Data free hai. Purane dost bhi rahenge. Or maybe I get mass of consumers who are still using feature phones, so non Android phones, who are excited about the smartphone category, and yet uh, there are a set of barriers 
uh, about uh, making that shift from feature phones to smartphones. And uh, this campaign, in fact, our entire marketing program is about handholding them to make that shift from feature phones to smartphones. With free data on Airtel for use on WhatsApp. Yendu kante friends ni vela kattalem. With that, it's a wrap on Storyboard this week. You can catch all our content on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back same time next week. See you soon.